So we're now going to look at some of the options that network operators or end sites have for multi-homing. And first off, we're going to look at what a transit provider is and what they do. Transit provider is another autonomous system which is used to provide the local network with access to other networks. They might provide just local transit, they might provide regional transit, but as most common today, they're usually providing transit to the whole internet. And transit providers need to be chosen wisely. It's not a case of just going out there finding the cheapest or most accessible one. If you have only one transit provider, you have no redundancy. We're back to the whole purpose of this presentation. We're trying to do multi-homing so that we have redundancy. If you have too many transit providers, it becomes really hard, if not impossible, to balance traffic on the multitude of external links. And there's no economy of scale. It costs a lot more per megabit per second. Internet transit capacity gets cheaper with the greater amounts of bandwidth that is purchased. And because of all this, it becomes really hard to provide any service quality to the end users. The general recommendation, and again considered best practice by many operators today, is to have at least two transit providers, but preferably no more than three. Two transit providers is the simple option. One provides redundancy in case the other one has a problem. Three at least gives a little bit more variety, again depending where the network operator is located globally. Common mistakes that people make includes signing up with too many transit providers because they then end up with lots of small circuits which cost more per megabit per second than equivalent larger ones. Transit rates per megabit per second reduce with increasing transit bandwidth purchased and it becomes really hard to implement any type of reliable traffic engineering that doesn't need daily fine-tuning depending on customer activities. And even with signing up with two or three transit providers, another common mistake is that there's no diversity because the chosen transit providers are all reached over the same submarine cable or over the same satellite connection. Or even if the chosen transit providers have good connectivity between the local network and the transits, maybe their onward connectivity is either poor as far as transit goes or they have very, very poor peering arrangements. So when a network operator is trying to choose how to multi-home, who they purchase transit from is vitally important. It is not the cheapest answer to an RFP. Peers, on the other hand, are another autonomous system with which the local network has agreed to exchange locally sourced routes and traffic. Now, these can be a private peer, which is a private link between two providers for the purpose of interconnecting, or they can be a public peer, for example, at an internet exchange point where network operators meet and freely decide who they will interconnect with. Industry recommendation for many years has been peer as much as possible. And again, the many mistakes made on the peering side. Mistaking a transit provider's exchange business for a no-cost, open, neutral, public peering point. Some operators have cashed in in the good name of internet exchange points and called their for-profit transit business an exchange. They're exchanging packets. They're exchanging traffic. That does not make them a neutral, no-cost, public peering point. Another mistake is not working as hard as possible to get peering. I have seen over the years many network operators will turn up in the same building, same data center, as an internet exchange point is located in. Yet they don't interconnect there. They don't peer. They don't connect to the exchange point fabric and try and peer with other operators there. Some people have said that transit is sometimes cheaper than peering. That's quite rare, given the cost of connecting to an exchange point is little more 
than the annual membership fee. And another common mistake is ignoring or avoiding competitors simply because they're competition. Even though the competitor is potentially a really viable peering partner to give customers of the local network, as well as the competitor, a better experience. After all, operators are here to ensure the best end user experience for their own customers. And if content is hosted on a competitor's network, surely interconnecting would be the best thing to do. Competitors normally fear that they would lose customers, hosted content to the competition. But actually the opposite is true. Interconnecting two service providers, serving the same locale, usually means a net benefit for both network operators.